How many times have you seen a TikTok video where they're using that annoying robot voice and they want to tell you about how great a product is? Like, oh, X product is so great, or my life has been completely different since I've tried Y product. Well, I had one of those videos show up on my feed here, and normally I never buy anything from TikTok or from that robot voice advertisement type thing, but um, I saw a video here of this little baby gaming controller for your phone, and I was so intrigued and interested interested that uh, I watched the video of course they're never in the description the product that they're talking about is never in the description so I had to go on Amazon and type in like you know one thumb controller and stuff like that either way I found this controller the exact one in the video listed on Amazon and I decided to pick one up the way I see it these TikTok videos can be promoting absolute trash and I don't trust anybody including you guys so <laughs> I spent my last $20 on this so that I could review it and talk about it with you guys so real quick, this is coming from someone who literally never games on their phone because I'd rather lose to nine year olds on my gaming PC than on my phone anyway. And for the longest time, I just assumed that mobile gaming was low quality and not very good. But as I mentioned in previous videos, I'm shocked with how far mobile gaming has gone. And I give the mobile game industry a lot of props right now, except for their microtransaction stuff. But you see every year, mobile gaming gets pushed closer and closer to console quality with the current games that we have already and upcoming ones like Star Wars Hunters, Apex Legends, and Battlefield getting release dates in 2022. This is a pretty big deal now, and companies are finally starting to realize that there is money to be made selling mobile phone gaming accessories. So let's talk about this guy here. I'm 100% gonna say it wrong. I'm sorry. It's the Ifu Yao L1 Pro mobile game controller. And then <laughs> this stuff, I just have to talk about it real quick, always kills me. I just wonder why like more effort isn't put into these titles, but hey, it's not my product, and I guess they can do whatever they want, so. Getting this controller won't magically turn you into a pro gamer, but there is a quite a few benefits and the biggest one that actually improved my gaming experience was the screen space that's freed up by having my thumb off the screen. I have way better visibility and the experience is much more immersive. I can see the whole screen and my lower thirds are not obstructed. And because of this, I can definitely see a competitive advantage as well, since you'll be able to see enemies that show up in those lower thirds much faster and react much quicker than someone else whose screen is blocked by their touch controls. Another positive is that I can definitely control my character much easier. Feels very close, very similar to having a controller in terms of the movement, and I find myself moving much easier and faster than touch controls. When I play any games that require movement with touch controls specifically, I find my thumb sliding around the screen and I constantly have to reposition, which can be a pain in the ass and definitely break the flow of gameplay, at least for me. With hardware movement, my thumb is always where it's supposed to be, and for me, it saves a lot of brain power in having to think about where to put my thumb, how to reposition, and it makes me feel much more in control, which is a pretty big difference in my gaming experience. Other than that, there's a few things that you should probably know about the daily gaming experience with this guy. There's a charging port on the bottom, which allows you to charge your phone while gaming at the same time, which is great. The overall controller is super small and compact, so it'll fit pretty much everywhere where you would normally game, like a train or work perhaps, or even on a road trip. It doesn't take up much space at all, so there isn't this big attention-seeking setup around it. It's very easy to conceal, easy to carry, and it's something that's not going to get in the way very much. Speaking about setup in general, on iOS, it's really, really easy to get going here. You just plug in your phone, connect the controller via Bluetooth, and then you're done. Very simple. Android, it's a bit different, and I'll get into that in a little bit here, but I just want to touch on the last positive real quick, which is this little paw pad on the controller. Uh, while gaming, obviously, you can see the biggest benefit, which most people haven't even thought about, is when you take a break and you finally get to see that little paw sitting on that controller there and it just reminds you how great dogs are and how us as humans just don't deserve them this does also have a actual competitive advantage too even though it's kind of silly that it's a paw pad it definitely does help with the grip it being pushed up or extruded like that it's easy to rest your thumb on it and you get some good control out of it so it it actually is pretty cool <laughs> as for the neutral slash negative pieces of this i see a lot of reviews that discuss android compatibility being spotty and I don't have this on Android but I've read a, quite a few reviews and if you're an Android user I'd probably do a hard pass on picking this up unless you want to screw around with it and tinker with it because it's a little small it might get uncomfortable for longer play sessions I can't speak at all about the hand sizes in general I guess but for context I hold an iPhone 12 pretty comfortably and after a few hours of gaming my thumb starts to cramp up a bit but to be fair that also happens occasionally in my Nintendo switch as well so in this one 
I'm gonna lean towards if you have smaller hands, this is definitely like a super comfortable controller. But if you obviously have like giant like monster hands, I'd probably pass on this. Something I wanted to talk about real quick was the experience playing with an iPad in particular with this controller. With this, I definitely have to grip the iPad differently with the controller than I would if I were normally using touch controls, which does take a bit of time to get used to. On the iPad itself with this controller, I find myself stretching quite a bit to access on-screen controls, definitely more than usual gameplay here. So just keep that in mind. Finally, the number one negative for me is that it's pretty much required to take your phone out of the case to use this controller. Don't get me wrong with some cases it can definitely be done especially if they're thin enough but on thicker cases i can easily see you damaging the controller squeezing in a tight fit and damaging the lightning connector so i personally would feel more comfortable using this controller on my phone with a thin case no case or just a completely different controller if that's a concern for you here and obviously that equates best to if you're buying this gift for a kid keep in mind they're going to be very tempted to take this case off and you just know how kids are with electronics especially if they're expensive like if they're a thousand dollar phone kids are just more prone to breaking them on accident like i don't know how it happens so you know keep that in mind if you're buying this controller for a kid they might try it to take the case off and that might be a problem for you so just keep an eye on that in the end i think this controller is a solid buy but only on ios devices personally anyway it's just the most compatible and easiest platform to experience this controller on where you'll have the least amount of problems in my opinion what we have here is a really simple controller that works well for what it is exactly. I definitely had an improved gaming experience in almost every way compared to the base touch controls, but when compared to a full-on controller, there's no comparison, and an actual controller with triggers is going to help you maximize your skill and enjoyment out of mobile gaming. If you prefer aiming with the screen, I think this will still be a nice upgrade over the touch movement controls, and for the price, I think it's worth the time, and most people should get some good gaming hours out of this, especially if they're used to that traditional moving around with a joystick. But guys, Guys, that's pretty much it. I uh, picked this up, made the video, and I hope that you guys had as much fun watching as I did actually making this video here. But I'm getting out of here. I did not expect it to be this long. And as you can imagine, I got stuff to do. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.